Welcome to Rad Quarters. Today we'll be talking about contrast enhanced ultrasound of hepatic hemangioma. I'm Dr. Dan Koval, and this episode is sponsored by Samsung Ultrasound. The beautiful images you're about to see were obtained on a Samsung RS85 Prestige ultrasound unit. We're going to take a look at two cases of contrast enhanced ultrasound of hepatic hemangioma, and I'll review key teaching points throughout. Let's start by talking about the microbubble contrast agents that we use in contrast ultrasound. So these are gas-filled microspheres that have a lipid or protein shell. And the agent that I'll be showing you in these cases is sulfur hexafluoride lipid type A microspheres. And this is an inert gas of six fluoride atoms bound to a single sulfur atom, and that's surrounded by a phospholipid shell. And if you recall, phospholipids have a hydrophilic negatively charged phosphate group polar head and hydrophobic nonpolar fatty acid tails, just when you thought you escaped high school biology. <laughs> And thank you to Dr. Nick Shaheen for providing this fabulous diagram. You can check out some more of his work on Instagram at Nick H. Shaheen. These contrast agents are similar in size to red blood cells, which is unique when compared to the smaller molecular sizes of the contrast agents we use in CT and MRI. So that means these are small enough to cross capillary beds, but too large to enter the interstitium. So that makes them pure intravascular agents, and that's ideal for assessing vascularity and perfusion. Just to compare the iodinated contrast we use in CT and the gadolinium we use in MRI for contrast, since these are smaller agents, the particles will continue beyond the vasculature into the interstitium. So that explains the differences in contrast enhancement between different lesions and pathologic processes. And after these are injected intravenously, ultrasound contrast agents have a half-life of about 10 minutes. They're eliminated via the lungs after that. The patient will just breathe them off. And that allows for multiple injections in a single session, if necessary. So what are the advantages of contrast ultrasound compared to CT and MRI? Well, the contrast resolution is extremely high. You can actually visualize individual micro bubbles and depict a minute amount of flow. And that allows differentiation of avascular debris from small solid nodules and complex cysts. Also, the negative predictive value of contrast ultrasound is extremely high in excluding the presence of flow, nearly 100% meaning if you don't see flow in the lesion in contrast ultrasound, then it's very likely that there is no flow, no vascularity. Also, the temporal resolution is extremely high for contrast ultrasound, which will eliminate motion artifact, which is a big problem on CT and especially MRI. So it's great for those patients who may be elderly or debilitated and have trouble staying still on MRI. Contrast ultrasound might be the contrast modality of choice for further evaluation. And regarding hemangioma, the accuracy and specificity of contrast ultrasound also approaches 100%, so it's extremely accurate. All right, I apologize for all those words. <laughs> Let's look at some images now. I just wanted to give you a background before we do case review. So this was an older female patient presenting with a new primary diagnosis of malignancy, and on her staging CT abdomen and pelvis, a hypervascular lesion in the subcapsular right hepatic lobe was identified. So there was an obvious concern, could this be a metastatic lesion? On ultrasound, we can see this heterogeneously hypoechoic lesion with a faint surrounding halo of echogenicity. Now, this finding is somewhat indeterminate as hemangiomas are often diffusely echogenic on ultrasound, but if you've seen my hepatic hemangioma pitfalls and mimics lecture, you may recall that hemangiomas can sometimes have a reverse target appearance where they're centrally hypoechoic and peripherally echogenic. But we would still need to work this up further in a patient with a new primary malignancy. So a contrast ultrasound was done, and here on the right-hand side, we're looking at the grayscale B-mode image, and on the left-hand side, this is the contrast-enhanced ultrasound image with the background suppressed. And we're about 14 seconds post-contrast injection and saline flush, and on contrast ultrasound, the arterial phase continues until about 40 seconds. So we're in the arterial phase, and you can see this lesion has peripheral nodular globular enhancement. And as we image, we want to slightly sweep through the lesion just to show other areas of enhancement. You can see this globular enhancement again. And you may wonder, why is this grayscale image so grainy? Well, that's because we're using a low mechanical index. Here you can see the MI is 0 0.09, which is much lower than we typically use for a routine diagnostic grayscale ultrasound. And why is that? Well, the mechanical index is a measure of acoustic power output. So at a high MI, because of this high acoustic power, the microbubbles are so delicate they'll actually burst. However, at a low MI, the microbubbles are preserved and will have a nonlinear response to the ultrasound beam. And that's different than other surrounding tissues, which will have more of a linear response. And what that means is it allows us to create this vascular only image, which is what we're seeing here. And when we want to disperse the microbubbles, we'll actually turn up the mechanical index temporarily. 
Now the trade-off to using a low mechanical index is while it's great for micro bubbles, it's not so great for the grayscale image. Because we're using a lower power output, the image becomes darker and lower quality. But that's okay because we're really just using that B mode grayscale image as a localizer to find the lesion of interest and focus our attention with the contrast images. So as we continue to monitor this lesion, now we're at two minutes. So with contrast ultrasound, after the arterial phase ends at 40 seconds, we're then in the portal venous phase until about two minutes. And you can see that the lesion is fairly diffusely enhancing. And now we're continuing three minutes post contrast enhancement. And now we're entering the late phase, the equilibrium phase. So that begins about two minutes after the time of contrast injection and saline flush. And again, the lesion is diffusely enhancing. Here again, at four minutes, it's still enhancing. We don't see any washout, meaning that the lesion is not becoming darker to the surrounding contrast enhanced liver parenchyma. And let's look at this on real time imaging. So, shortly after contrast administration, we see this peripheral nodular globular enhancement with gradual centripetal progression. We're at about 25 seconds now. You can see by 30 seconds, the lesion is nearly completely filled in and it remains hyper enhancing relative to the surrounding hepatic parenchyma with no washout. Typically, with contrast, ultrasound will image continuously after injection for 30 to 60 seconds and then intermittently every minute for about 5 to 10 seconds or so, up until 5 minutes to evaluate for any potential washout. So, this is a typical hepatic hemangioma on contrast ultrasound showing that peripheral discontinuous globular enhancement in the arterial phase and then progressive centripetal contrast filling with iso or hyper enhancement in the portal venous and late equilibrium phases. And compare that to a non hepatocellular malignancy like a metastasis, which will typically demonstrate early, meaning less than one minute, and or marked washout. And that's based on the description in the LIRADS 2017 ACR contrast ultrasound core document. And I say non hepatocellular malignancy because a hepatocellular malignancy like HCC will actually demonstrate late and only mild washout. So it tends to wash out after a minute. Now, you may have noticed that the contrast enhanced appearance of hemangioma is similar to the CT and MRI enhancement pattern. And that's because this tumor is a primarily vascular tumor and the ultrasound contrast agent is a primarily vascular agent. So you'll notice that other hepatic tumors like cholangiocarcinoma or lesions like focal nodular hyperplasia will enhance differently on contrast ultrasound than they do on CT or MRI. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's move on to the last case. So this was a larger hemangioma. You can see now we're using the curved transducer, which allows for increased beam penetration due to a lower frequency. But you can see the grayscale appearance is similar. We have that reverse target appearance of central hypoechogenicity with peripheral echogenicity. And about 20 seconds post contrast injection and saline flush, we're seeing that peripheral globular enhancement. As we look at this over time from 26 seconds to 46 seconds, that peripheral globular enhancement progresses towards the center. Continuing from 52 seconds to 3 minutes and 11 seconds, that continues to spread towards the center, but notice that the center is not enhancing. And this is different from our previous case, the smaller hemangioma, which was already enhancing completely by 52 seconds. And when we look at this on real time imaging, you can see shortly after contrast injection, we're seeing that peripheral globular contrast enhancement with gradual centripetal progression. Now we're at about 30 seconds post contrast. There's still a lot of hemangioma to fill in. But notice that we're not seeing any areas of washout, meaning areas that have enhanced and then lost contrast. We're just seeing areas centrally that are not filling in. And that can be normal for these larger hemangiomas. So even by five minutes, this hemangioma did not completely fill in. And that's okay as long as the overall enhancement pattern is concordant with hemangioma. So filling can be partial or complete depending on lesion size. This is also an example of a hemangioma that becomes relatively iso enhancing on the delayed equilibrium phase, as that three minute image shows. They're not always hyper enhancing relative to the surrounding parenchyma on the delayed series. All right, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you found this educational. Thank you to our sponsor, Samsung Ultrasound, and also again to Nick Shaheen for the fabulous graphic. You can find more of his work at Nick H. Shaheen on Instagram. If you like this lecture, a great way to support us is to subscribe to the video podcast on Apple or Spotify, or by clicking the YouTube subscribe button. Reviews are also greatly appreciated. To see bonus teaching material posted throughout the week, follow us on social media. Links are in the show notes, or click the YouTube community tab. Until next time, radiology is life. <laughs>